This episode serves as an introduction. We're gonna be looking at the project and what we were working with. Later on, we're gonna move through to the more technical work. Recently, the team and I had the pleasure of working on the launch of Aston Martin's latest car, a collaboration with British Airways celebrating the anniversary of Concorde's first flight. What makes an icon? Bold, visionary design, the ability to inspire awe. Concorde had it all. For those on board, the speed, the power, the prestige they experienced, it was unforgettable. Even from the ground, it commanded wonder. That visceral sound, the unmistakable silhouette, and always the almost unbelievable thought that this machine could travel faster than the speed of sound. Time marches on, technology progresses, new, more efficient innovations take center stage. At 50, Concorde has passed from being a technological marvel to an icon. Those of us who experienced its awesome power, now older, wiser, tell our children and grandchildren, in my day, we could travel at supersonic speed. What was it like? It's hard to say. You had to feel it, the thrill, the sheer power, the exhilaration. In this video, I'm going to focus on the editing, color grading, and a little bit on the sound design. As a quick overview, we shot in several locations and each had a very different requirement. Aston Martin's factory, where we were more run and gun, working with Aston Martin's designers, and that was more controlled lighting with the Bron LEDs, at Cywell Aerodrome, capturing the actual car with our black arm stabilized vehicle rig and chase car. In our studio, we recreated a 70s set for that sequence with the child holding the Concorde model. We filmed in a modern house with our young girl working with an Aston Martin car model and then a Bristol Aerospace Museum to get a shot of the Concorde and our young actress together. And finally, we did a few shots in our office uh, with an iPad just to show some of the renders of the inside of the car because that uh, wasn't possible to film because the inside isn't built yet. In each scenario, we were using our Blackmagic cameras, so that was either on the Ursa Pro, the G2, or the Pocket 6K, and shooting Blackmagic RAW on those as well. This meant that we had a lot of flexibility when it came to the post-production side of things to manipulate the white balance, and that's particularly relevant when we're shooting outside, particularly on this vehicle rig, because we had very limited windows in between passing rainstorms to capture the perfect shot. And that meant that we just needed to know that we could go and not worry about having to change the white balance because that would just be another thing that we had to try and get perfect on the day, and there really wasn't time. Because this project was in association with British Airways, we had access to their entire archive of Concorde footage, and everyone on the client side was very keen to have lots of this included so that we could really ground the heritage of the new car with Concorde. Of course, this came in a selection of different codecs and resolutions from all kinds of different time periods, but they all dropped straight into our timelines and played without any issues at all, so that was really good. When we're using the cut window within DaVinci Resolve, I can take, say, a section of my edit just here and say, well, okay, I like the shot of the little girl just there, but I would like it if we could maybe have her come in a moment or two earlier with the car just there. All I do is go over to the left-hand side, click the trim in, and then I can just eke that out using the jog wheel just here to extend or pull in that edit and it ripples everything along with it as well. So all the audio is moving, all the other shots are moving and any of the extra things like uh, we've got some text that's added at the end of the video, that's all moving too. And it's just a really quick, easy way and I can do it with my hands just here. I can keep my eyes on the page. I don't have to worry about clicking with a mouse, grabbing an edit point and dragging it. I just click those two buttons and I can see exactly where I want that edit to fall. At this point, Paola, our editor, worked on pulling in all of the right clips and getting everything chopped together with the archive footage and matching up the kind of shots that we needed from the archive footage and then handed the project back over to me for final finessing and grading. For this stage of the process, I like to use a control surface to free up my eyes and make everything quicker and a little bit more accurate with the adjustments. So firstly, I'm gonna go in and go to the raw settings, and that's going to be an initial pass, and that's really just adjusting everything to make sure that uh, where, for example, we didn't have time to perfectly white balance if we're outside, I can come in and I can just set the white balance to what I want it to be within here. I could be looking at scopes, I could be making an accurate judgment on that. We've also got access, because it's Blackmagic Raw, to the ISO settings, exposure, tint, and a whole cavalcade of um, other adjustments that we can make, like the highlight roll-off, the uh, shadow roll-off. So we can just tweak everything 
to where it's meant to be and make sure that all the clips are unified, all of the clips that we have access to that um, have Blackmagic Raw that is, we can adjust those right here. Obviously with the historical archive clips, we're just kind of sitting those where they are and we'll make some adjustments later on if we need, but the pattern of color within those is probably where we want it to be because it, it feels old and like it's been shot in a different era, so that's already working for us. Now, secondly, I would go in and add a LUT or a plugin such as Film Convert, perhaps, just to get a base to work from. Third, after that, we're gonna start doing a corrective um, process. So that could be something as simple as removing an object, a speck of dirt, or manipulating something with power windows. So we're doing exposure adjustments or color adjustments on a more specific level. Fourth, any extra creative touches to enhance the look of the final piece. Finally, everything as a whole needs to be checked to see that it's gonna flow from start to finish and that the shots are making sense. And there are a couple of shots within this project that uh, I would like to just have a look through and they involve a couple of the more powerful tools that you've got available in the color correction pane within DaVinci. In the next part, we're diving into color balancing and white balancing. So we're gonna be looking at how we do some corrective work and how we level out the sky and our foreground subject, which is the car.